Hey guys, in this video we're going to create these two iOS app screens inside of Figma and I'm also going to talk through my workflow, some of the tips and tricks that I learned over the many years that I worked as a UI UX designer. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So. As I'm starting out, uh, the very first thing which uh, I did is uh, simply um, attach uh, a uh, UI screen which uh, I already created in the past just to have some visual reference and uh, also another thing which I did is to download for free the iOS kit uh, which um, you can find on Apple's website. If you actually search on Google for uh, Apple iOS kit uh, or maybe some, some entries, uh, um, you should be able to find it straight away, but if you don't find it, maybe try with uh, iOS uh, Apple Kit for Sketch or for Adobe XD. And uh, although I'm working on in Figma, I basically used it uh, because um, in Figma you can easily import Sketch files, so it's uh, very easy to add. And uh, this is something which I like to do at the start of a project, uh, of an iOS project, especially because uh, this allows me to have some uh, assets which are compliant with uh, the Apple's uh, iOS guidelines. And uh, this enables me to work uh, more um, easily and uh, without wasting time in uh, finding assets whenever I need them on the web. So as you can see, uh, the very first thing which I did is uh, grab uh, one of the buttons and uh, I also added the top menu. And uh, now I'm adding some uh, text below the, the button. And uh, by the way, this uh, is uh, an uh, iOS uh, UI kit uh, which I'm developing and uh, it's going to be available on my store. And uh, if you haven't checked uh, uh, my UI kits uh, already, feel free to click in the link in the description. You can see the link where um, you're going to be redirected to, to my store. And I created over 20 UI kits. Uh, some are free, some are premium. And uh, basically this uh, is going to be one of the UI kits which uh, I'm going to release. Uh, so you're go actually going to, to have this uh, available once uh, it's, um, it's done. So as you can see, I kind of took some inspiration from uh, this, uh, this, other, um, this other screen. I wanted to create something unique, but still keeping that uh, sense of uh, clarity of uh, using a lot of white space and uh, uh, I, I'm, I, I see that having some inspiration um, before I, I start a project from uh, from scratch always allows me to, to kind of get in the flow easier uh, in a more in a more easy way because if you start from scratch with uh, a white canvas it can quite it can be quite overwhelming at times. So even if you're going to come up with a solution which is completely different, I think that uh, actually having that uh, visual inspiration of uh, something which um, is really good, it's really solid, um, always helps you to kind of frame uh, your, your mind also in the brainstorming stage. So as you can see, I'm creating some uh, fictional text uh, and uh, creating some, some elements and uh, this iOS app is going to be a app which helps you to learn languages and uh, things of that nature. And um, uh, I have some, some inspiration from some language apps which uh, I've been using because uh, in the past year how I kind of uh, refreshed my French. Uh, my primary language is, uh, uh, is Italian and uh, I also speak English but kind of wanted to, to learn some French so this is the reason why I kind of uh, went into that, uh, <laughs> that rabbit hole of uh, learning, uh, learning lessons, learning uh, languages and uh, this was the inspiration behind uh, this uh, screen. Now, that being said, uh, for this iOS project, I'm not using grids or rulers at this stage. The reason being is because um, uh, we have this central um, central layout and uh, I kind of want to keep it uh, um, quite uh, uh, open so far. I really don't want to create much constraints when I'm first working on brainstorming the various uh, 
uh, the various uh, opportunities which uh, which we have uh, and uh, yeah I mean this is uh, just something I wanted to to do at this stage but uh, could definitely uh, change in the future now uh, at this stage I'm looking through some uh, icons in a flat icon and uh, although I'm not simply going to like copy and paste the icon my um, the goal over here is to have a base, is to have already uh, some shapes uh, uh, which uh, are, are vector and that uh, are already created and uh, I basically want to bring it uh, uh, to the next level and make it consistent with the brand up feeling so this is a trick which uh, um, I learned from uh, another youtuber, I can't recall the name but um, it's, uh, it's something which is uh, pretty cool because uh, it enables you to leverage uh, a current asset so that you can save some time in building the shape uh, because alternatively one uh, there's two ways you can you can go for for the most part the first one is uh, you can uh, simply take a, a photo or um, yeah just just uh, just an image and kind of trace uh, the shapes uh, from that image or alternatively you can uh, draw something from uh, from your mind and uh, on, a, on a piece of paper import it into your Mac or PC and uh, simply trace it from there now in this case I kind of went for this hybrid approach in order to save a little bit of time and uh, kind of work in a more agile way but still creating uh, uh, these, uh, these gradients and this uh, adapting this new color palette uh, in order to really make the project, uh, the, the illustration unique for the project and uh, create this, this new style which is uh, uh, unique for the project again. So yeah, this is where I'm, uh, where I'm going with this. Um, the rationale behind it is uh, uh, having on the very first home screen uh, a person which uh, is uh, currently reading there is this uh, association with uh, learning which is which is quite clear it's quite universal in my opinion so this was the rationale behind the decision of using this specific illustration and at this point uh, i kind of want to experiment a little bit and um, I'm trying things out. I haven't built this uh, screen before recording it, so I was kind of uh, playing around with some some concepts. And um, yeah, I mean, overall, it's just uh, an experimentation phase. What I did, however, was uh, have uh, a very, very rough wireframe idea of uh, what I wanted, but uh, I didn't get uh, too much detail because I really wanted to to keep the exploration part uh, open in uh, for for this video. So yeah, that was uh, was pretty much the the rationale. So at this point I'm uh, experimenting a little bit more with some uh, backgrounds and I um, wanted to give uh, um, the background an irregular shape in order to make it a little bit more interesting and visually dynamic. So yeah, I tried this, uh, this background uh, shapes uh, and um, kind of fit around with uh, the pen tool in Figma until I could eventually find uh, a shape which uh, pleased me and um, at that point I kind of experimented with different colors different opacities especially and uh, see where I wanted this to go and uh, as you you're going to see in just a moment I ended up just selecting uh, a very light and uh, transparent theme for the background and uh, yeah, this is uh, essentially the way, the, the way I wanted to go because I didn't want the background to have uh, that much uh, visual emphasis compared to the illustration itself. So this is the reason why um, I created this. Now, 
as you're going to be able to see in uh, later in the in this tutorial um, I also went uh, and uh, um, and uh, named the, the layers and uh, grouped them together and pretty much organized the layer system. Now for this specific iOS app uh, I'm not going to build a design system and uh, the reason being is that I want this to be compatible with uh, both uh, Sketch, uh, Adobe XD, Figma and uh, basically I don't want to create uh, symbols because they are going to work only in Figma and also a second reason why I'm not going to do so is uh, because uh, I, I, I really want this to be an a UI kit which is a drag and drop and I don't want to have uh, symbols, uh, uh, too, too many symbols and nested symbols going because for the most part, as I'm a user of UI kits myself, and uh, you know, as, as well as creating many of these, uh, I found out that when I'm working on client projects, most of the times I'm going to need to tweak uh, um, the elements and the components, and uh, I noticed that having uh, the, there is a point of diminishing return when it comes to creating. Uh, extensive uh, symbols and nested symbols in a UI kit uh, and uh, uh, compared to a client project. With client projects I would go much more in depth and uh, create nested symbols and entire design systems which are really really uh, well structured. However for UI kits um, I used to do that too um, especially recently in my recent UI kits but I surely did notice a point of diminishing return when it comes to the ease of implementation if you're actually using the UI kit. So that's the reason why I'm going to be lighter on uh, symbols and design systems in the future for, for my UI kits because uh, I want to keep things practical and uh, essentially create uh, an asset which is easy to use easy to implement and uh, it's fast to implement uh, also for non-technical uh, people because there's a lot of uh, sketch users that uh, might not have uh, the knowledge when it comes to, to symbols and nested symbols so they're going, they're going to download the UI kits and they're not going to be able to, to use them because uh, maybe some of those dynamics are too complex uh, for, for their level of understanding so this is definitely something which uh, um, which uh, I thought a lot about but um, yeah just wanted to keep you guys updated on uh, on that uh, that being said when you're working with clients and uh, it's on a project where it makes sense uh, for them financially. Creating a design system can be a hu huge, um, ben of, uh, of huge benefit because uh, it enables you to have consistency at uh, a brand and a UI design level, which uh, is really difficult to achieve uh, uh, without. And it also enables you to make uh, bulk changes really, really fast. So it's definitely an investment worth uh, uh, considering for clients which uh, you know are working especially with complex projects so as I'm creating this second screen uh, I thought about using a book because uh, it just creates a, a, um, a visual which is pleasing and uh, it's uh, totally in line with uh, the main concept of the app uh, um, there's nothing that uh, you associate uh, more to education than, uh, than a book, in my opinion. Um, or, I mean, there, there might be a qu uh, quite a few more. <laughs> you could use a school, you could use students, but a, a book is, is a really safe way to, to go. And uh, you can definitely see that uh, connection between the, between the topics. So, yeah, we're about uh, to wrap it up at this stage. Um, as I previously mentioned, I'm just grouping the layers and uh, making uh, everything work well together and um, yeah, just, just keeping things uh, uh, tidy and uh, organized, which is, uh, which is the key for working, uh, especially on large scale projects. Um, organization can help you save both headaches and uh, time along the, the way. So. It's, um, I see it as an upfront investment, which uh, is really worth the ROI on, uh, 
on uh, some uh, projects. Of course, if you're working on just a quick one pager, which is a one off, and you absolutely know it's a one off, maybe it's not worth considering. But again, um, really depends on on the scenario. And um, yeah, guys, we're literally about to wrap up this tutorial and uh, I'm going to create many more of these because uh, I'm going to record uh, this uh, um, this creation of this uh, iOS kit so stay tuned for, for more videos in, uh, in the future and um, this is definitely going to be a journey which uh, is going to help uh, um, it's going to help you understand uh, you know some, some of the dynamics that go behind the creation of, uh, of a UI iOS kit and um, you're also going to learn Figma along the way. So yeah, we're literally seconds apart and uh, this is pretty much it, the end result. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video tutorial. Now, if you liked it, uh, please leave a thumbs up. Um, I always, uh, this really encourages me to create more content. And feel free to leave a comment if you have any question regarding uh, this uh, tutorial or uh, UI UX design in general. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, uh, feel free to consider doing so because on my channel, I have over 200 videos all related to UI UX design, both uh, with uh, software tutorials and also the uh, me talking about the freelance design part of uh, the business because I'm a UI UX designer with uh, over eight years of experience and uh, I've been working remotely for um, the past years uh, and uh, in uh, my channel, I'm essentially sharing uh, the knowledge which I acquired over the many years of doing this. So this is it for this video, see you in the next tutorial.